her in her story because it is completely left out of Western thought. It is left out of the so-called African conscious thought. And for me to even think about wanting to connect there and then to come across your book, which is a her story book, and I met another sister, um, Sister Nubia, who is an anthropologist that she's left and she's, you know, in the Sudan now helping dig that stuff up to, you know, bring our story, her story back. I'm just forever humbled. And I, I, I thank the great mother, you know, continually every day. I have a um, co-host. I, know, I think she's on the phone. I'm not sure if she's here. Are you here, sis? Yes, ma'am. Okay. She, we talk about your book all the time. <laughs> oh, and, and I'll let her speak to you because I'm pretty sure she wants to say thank you. And then my last question would be for you to give some words of encouragement to the sisters who, you know, us who are the descendants of these siblings, to, you know, open ourselves up to this stuff. Think another way. Research yourself and have courage because, like I said, I was attacked. But I'll let um, sister, her name is Shopless, I'll let her talk to you because we talk about your book all the time. Yes, Mama Zobe, first of all, I want to say thank you, and it's a great honor to be on the line with you and have you share this information with us. I'm so floored right now, I just can't believe it. I had to put my phone on mute because I did not want to disturb anything that you had to say. I was just in school right now absorbing all the information. And a lot of things that you've said just make so much sense. It just seems so natural. It just, you know, it makes, it just all clicks. If, if everything clicks when you put it, when you start putting it into its proper perspective, you can see how it all originated with us. You can see how it all originated with her. And you can see how everything is still in place. It's just the characters have been changed. Exactly. And, and it's going to reach a dark conclusion as well. Uh, but uh, we need to understand that those prophecies were not just aimed at our invaders. They were aimed at us. Because her her removal from the temple started eternally. When we get to a stage where we're no longer just reclaiming, oh, yes, well, uh, Isis was black. We know now that the bust of Nefertiti was a fake. He knew that, uh, that she looked like us instead of this image that they have here. But when we get from that stage and start investigating, which is something that has never been written, the internal politics of what happened that weakened our foundation all across the ancient world that caused us to, to, to be vulnerable to our enemies. We need to explore that and not look at this thing in terms of masculine, uh, uh, it's the black man's fault or it's the black woman's fault. Because uh, just as much as our mothers were divine goddesses, they were also the, the dark side. They were also witches. Very, very dark ones that used magic and sorcery. They were black male sorcerers. Uh, the, the Battle of the Titans, you hear that a lot and you read a lot in Greek history. This was a war between uh, the, mas the black males, uh, uh, thunder priests' gods, and the divine goddesses' gods. That's the level we took this. That was not Greek mythology. The Greeks, first of all, didn't have a clue what any of that meant. But we uh, don't understand that the gods walked the earth with us. And they put their divine knowledge and power in the hands of our ancient mothers and fathers in those priesthoods. It is not in the history books where, uh, or, uh, the, on the military field where the war took place, it was in the temples. And this is why it's so important, even today, what is happening in Haiti with these Christians over there, mm -hmm. that they continue the tradition of destroying those temples. Mm -hmm. Because they are still concerned <laughs> that the divine is going to rise from them. Because the Pope know where it came from. So when you study history, you have to study these temples. Why were they so important for the invaders to seize? If their religions were so superior prior to them coming there, why did they need ours? Right. What was in them? And how were they able to get to them? <laughs> so the corruption began there. 
Now, as far as uh, 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 black women are concerned, uh, no one needs to tell you who you are. You know. You just don't know the road to get to validating who you are. And the validation is not an intellectual one. It is spiritual and not of your own choosing, but of, of the laws and traditions and the sacred rights that your ancient mother laid down that are still here in these traditions that most tend to shine. Mm. Okay. And there is no other road. I'm going to tell you that now. Mark my words. There is no other road. If our mothers and fathers died here before they would give up their spirits, that tells you what that what they meant, what they were really all about. And they fought to save our religions here. They fought and died. So black women, you know who you are. But uh, many of them have misaligned themselves into paths that have nothing to do with them and that your mothers and the spirits that your mother bequeathed to you will not validate. You cannot make it up as you go along like the Western feminists do. You can't do that. <laughs> you can't feel it and invent it. They are divine laws. And you need to and that is what you need to link back up with. You just sit and watch how this whole drama, global drama, plays out. It can only implode on itself until she is restored. Your strength, your aggressiveness, uh, what they call aggressiveness, uh, your sense of self, uh, any other woman when they never made it through what you went through. Right. Uh, your sense of self and what a lot of, Black men, unfortunately, find as a fault uh, without understanding, and because, it's because of this lack of understanding on who you were and who you are and the yoke from which he and you were nurtured. Uh -huh. You were never meant to be a Miss um, Chrissy, whatever that is. <laughs> you were a warrior. That's how your mother started out. She started out as a warrior. Right. You can't tame... The, 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 the wild beast of the forest or nature sitting back grooming your nails. You had to know the powers of those animals just as you did the, 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 the spirits all around them. You had to know how to survive because you were the perpetuation of the human race. That's right. Queen Mother, may I ask you one thing? You, you, you mentioned about restoring her. Mm -hmm. um, now, for us as her daughters, the, all I, you know, I, I don't know. All that's within me, you know, that I that I have inside me. I was taught that I need to do the opposite because um, it's natural to me. All these things you're saying fall under the category of me. I, I know I'm a warrior, and I know I have an assertiveness, and I know I have a, a spirit, a fighting spirit that doesn't quit. Now, um, to return and restore the ways of the great mother, is this, is this something that we already know or is this some sort of initiation process that we need to go through? To come back to, to your traditions and uh, keep in mind now, uh, the sacred knowledge uh, during our mother's time, it was not meant for everybody. Right. Uh, we're in what we call a so-called democracy where information, the sacred and the profane, are blended and everybody feels entitled to have and to know. Uh, when even if your ears touched it, you would not know it. Heard it, you would not hear it if it wasn't meant for you. So we have to get away from that notion that uh, we're, we are entitled. You start where you are, come back to, to your own home tradition, the you know, the real ones, you know, you have a lot of stuff out here. You may end up going through a lot of things before you find your real home. Your ancestors will lead you, and you're not disconnected from them. This is another lie they told you. Why? Because that first ancestor of yours that was brought over here uh, and enslaved uh, is 
now with those who are African. They know who their mother and father was when they come over here. When they die, that's who they go back to. Right. And they're back with them, and they're all connected with you. So they're all together fighting for you, fighting for you to find your way back home to them because it's passed down ancestrally. Right. And whatever your answer, that's the first thing you need to get. When you raise your child, uh, your child don't go to the neighbor no matter what condition the neighbor, the, you can live in a shack, the child, the neighbor can live in a palace. But your child don't go to the neighbor and expect uh, to get the secrets of her family from her neighbor. Right. 